Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Euphoria following the second week of the LEC Summer Split 2023. I'm Draco, joined by Cadrill, and our special guest of the day, none other than Trimby. Welcome, Trimby. Hello. No, he's not on Koi with that with that, that purple, purple lavender beautiful jersey. Uh, it does say jersey. fanatic on it. I thought it was Koi, but it's not. I did not mean to do that. But <laughs> that was the only I thing. I, subtle. One of the only things I had that are quite clean today. So yeah. you know, I had I, to do go for that I don't one. Know. <laughs> yeah. I know there's probably no bad blood, but in my head, it's that guy doing this on the grave when you show up in the purple fanatic jersey. You know, <laughs> when we show the standings, it might just be. As well. <laughs> oh my oh god! My god no. We'll get to that later, won't we? Because oh, there's my a lot of things um, going on in our league. Yeah, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever you're listening, you can also be listening somewhere else if you want to. Um, yeah, Trimby. I think first order of business. There's a lot to be excited about for you right now. Um, yes. The thing I'm most excited about is this dancing thing, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got moves. You're coming out. When did, when did this start? When did this, like, have you always wanted to dance? What's the process here? How did you get into dancing? Uh, I actually always wanted to take up, like, street dance or, like, just now I do hip-hop. Yep. But before, when I was, like, I mean, I started early, like, dancing because my mom would always, like, kind of force me to, like, go to different activities. dance classes. Yeah, yeah. Activities from school, know, you know. Yep, One same. of those that is just... Go after school, you know, She's my like, mom tells If you me. don't have anything to do, you exactly. do drugs and crime. Please go get it. You have to have an <laughs> yeah. after school activity. It <laughs> was more like you're inside all day playing video games. We need to get you outside because yeah. you don't That's socialize. The same. That was the Here's classic. a tennis racket. You're going to play for two years. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. But I was always like this, like this, uh, like this class, like more traditional classes. Then I had like two years capoeira, actually. So it's also kind of, it's not. I mean, it is dancish, but it's like martial yes, arts. Yes, martial arts capoeira? and capoeira. Capoeira. It's capoeira? the Brazilian, it like, Brazilian, like, yeah, it's, Brazilian it, it's like very rhythm-based martial so arts. So it also helped me a lot, like Damn. with like music and stuff. And then, you know, like I always wanted to go to a dance class when I came to Berlin. And I was like always asking, but before before the format changed, like right, uh, we had off days on Sunday. Yeah. So I could never find a dance class that you know, was uh, like good for me. Mm -hmm. And now when it's like on Tuesdays, I always can find something like mm -hmm. around and that's really nice, this change. Like it actually helps me be more of a human, you know, yeah, outside, yeah, of, sure. yeah. outside of gaming. And yeah, I started, it came really, really out of nowhere that I started dancing because I was like, one day, you know, like we we went like, I don't know, two, uh, one, two with Koi, you know, I'm going, yeah. I'm going to the bar with people. <laughs> and then like out of nowhere, Georgia, like trouble. She just says that uh, something about dance, uh, dance class. Cause I hear, and I'm like, yeah, actually I always wanted to go, you know? And I'm just instantly uh, saying that, yeah, I would love to join. But they said that that was, they wanted to go somewhere different, like different yeah. time. And I'm like, my off day is only on Tuesday, guys. I yeah. kind of want to go with you guys. <laughs> so please just let's try to find something. And it just casually happened and I've been going already for three months, two months. Nice. I had like a month break, right? In between because yeah. of off season and I didn't do anything in Poland. But yeah, like now I'm starting again and feels really good. So the big question now is when is the Boaster X Trimby <laughs> dance going to happen in the office? Because you guys live together, well not live together, work in the same yeah. space. And my man Boaster is a dance extraordinaire. Like he posts I mean, videos. I saw a little bit here. He's, he's crazy good. with he's it. He's good. <laughs> he's he's good. crazy with it. I'm saying that that's a content gold mine. And this is how we're going to make it happen is we're going to put social media pressure on uh, Fnatic. Okay. Not on you. Uh, on Pete, obviously. On, on Pete. Pete. We, we, just, we get enough people who listen to this podcast to go harass Fnatic <laughs> so that the content gets made. Because all I'm saying is, I'm jumping the gun a little bit here, but if you make worlds... Korean boot camp. Oh my I don't know days. if you've seen those Korean dance studio videos. Ooh. They're crazy. You go mm. learn a routine together. Halfway through, you bring in either a K-pop star or Boaster. Yep. Big routine, oh. big promotional video. Oh. Absolute fire fanatic free idea that I'm now going to try to force you. <laughs> Hashtag K-pop fanatic. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Make a trend. Give us the dance. <laughs> also, Pete, give us the freaking dance. Boaster does his dances before internationals as well. And on oh follower my. goals. And he wins them. My man's two for three right now this year. I'm just... I'm not here to jinx it, but I'm he's, not here. he's I just want, This is the content that I want. Because we did the Kia thing. We did the dance with me. And it was very fun. But cash or dancing, that's cool. That's very... You know, it's 2019, 2020 time. 2023, it's the era of player content. We need players to dance. I so see. I'm just saying, just a thing. Asia games are happening. You could be <laughs> scrimming. No. <laughs> Dancing, you could be dancing. <laughs> helps <laughs> helps the body and mind. No pressure. It does. Yeah. That's all I want to see. We though. just put the pitch out there. Yeah. Uh, is there anything that you guys do as a team? You talk about yourself. You're doing dance, and that's awesome. I'm yeah. glad you have something that isn't just like League of Legends. You know, yeah. it's good to have those other things. But when we had 
<laughs> the, pre- the previous fanatic bot playing on uh they did like an escape room or something together are you guys doing like any big team building activities? oh yeah we already had a couple of escape rooms i nice i was never a fan of those but it always mm. depends like last time we were it was really good yeah. i like the escape room actually and it was a lot of fun i mean the issue is like a lot sometimes we go with too many people right we go like team manager joins and all the players and when you do it at seven eight it, too it many gets cooks. messy it's really good yeah everyone starts cooking and there's so much stuff cooked up you know to like absolute limits it's not really good but yeah <laughs> it's this i think we have uh i mean we play board games like actually on daily pretty yeah. much nowadays and it's really nice it's like nice to just play something like just do something different we play like different games we try to play like find the games that are like cooperative and we can yeah. like play together as like a like big bigger unit because we also have like right like our uh, head of analysts and everyone like uh, yeah everyone wants to join and it's like eight nine people and it's not easy to find like an actual nice game that you know everyone will enjoy yep. you know like people who actually will not get bored at some point and it's not that long so there's some things it's getting a bit boring you know like for sure if you do it on daily but um uh, for now we're not bored of it yet yeah so it seems like and we're doing it feels nice it feels nice and it's you know it seems like the team has come together very quickly obviously you guys have you know a fantastic record so far and it's been a good split but before we kind of talk about this split this season and this team uh shifting attention back to kind of the process that brought you here because this yeah. was this was as a as a spectator uh, and I don't have all the details and you don't have to share all the details. Yeah. I don't know what all the details are. But this was like this was a very wacky off season. Now, mm-hmm. the Noah pickup, it's like cool. OK, exciting. I can see why bot lane obviously struggled in the previous split. But then they just got you yeah. out of nowhere. So Mainstay, <laughs> like former champion with uh, with Koi, with Odo, who also obviously went over to Excel. It's just like we were super caught off guard. Yeah, especially so like, in a trade. And especially in a trade. Yeah. Um, so how how did this go down? From from your perspective, was this something that you were initially like caught off guard by? Did you know this was coming? Yeah. Um, what was what was the process like for you? Well, I mean, the thing is, after winter split, I already had like thoughts in my mind that you know, like if we're gonna do same like this, maybe it will be good for me to change. Mm-hmm. There were just thoughts like that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, the more the more happened. It was it was really strange because everything that's been going around, right? Our spring split was just disastrous i would say regardless i mean we did like what we went fifth or uh, we went actually fifth i don't you know it's not that bad but when you have i personally had like a lot of you know like feelings towards like just winning you know Mm. i wanted to win i wanted to just be able to compete at the high like on just the highest stage and just win it all and it didn't work for us it just didn't work out at all and like yeah we needed a change i knew that there would be a change but I mean, personally, I didn't expect it would be me. Like, I just didn't. But yeah. on the other hand, I knew I was the guy who just... I felt bad with how things were. And I was open about it a lot. Like, yeah. I would always talk that something needs to change, you know? Like, something needs to happen. Because I felt like everyone, you know, felt bad. But at the end of the day, I felt like I was the only one who actually, like, was so uh, open about it, you know? I would yeah. all the time just, you know, like, say that think yeah something we need to do something yeah. right then yeah, yeah. we tried our best to do a lot of different stuff we tried to like fix things i also had my own issues you know which didn't help too much at the time yeah and nowadays i would say that yeah it helped like this whole experience helped me a lot especially mm-hmm. spring split because that's the time i actually got to understand a lot about myself that yeah. helped me a lot is there anything you can share from that like what is yeah. it is it do you did you realize more of what you need in a team environment or more of like what role you want to play? Like what did you actually yeah. learn through this, through this difficult I mean, sport? I have like a lot of like actual, like, yeah, like this all things, like all of the things I learned, mm-hmm. there's a lot of them because when I heard that I might be changed yep. and like after, after our split, like at first I thought maybe I shouldn't talk with people about it. Maybe I should just keep it with myself because I was still in Berlin when yeah. I heard that I might be changed. Mm-hmm. But I was like, Nah, hell no, nah. it's not me, you know, I had to talk with everyone about yeah. it and uh, through all of the talks I had with everyone, I had uh, like, you know, all the coaches, GM, like all the players, I realized a lot, you know, what, how they felt. I mean, it's kind of sad that we had such talks only after an actual split and yeah. not before, but it's also because of me because, uh, you know, like I could play, put blame on anyone, like sure. 
because you know like i could be like this uh, but i just wanted to make sure that you know i'm fine with it and i learn what happened you know and after all the talks i learned so much it's actually uh, like i had like one two weeks in off season when like i was just you know there sitting in front of my pc at my home and i was just figuring out all of this stuff because i had so much stuff to think from yeah because um i realized how i changed throughout this year compared to last year's i felt like before when i was in rogue i was so uh, i would say i was so helpful to everyone and i never cared about myself yeah and this year i felt like that energy just went like was gone you know like i i just couldn't do it anymore like this where like i was i felt like i was doing a lot for others and i was like just making up for others you know and i never talked about it like i never really i never really tried to help others i was just i was helping others by just doing more but it didn't it didn't really help them right because i was like doing something for them well, they mm-hmm. didn't really learn much, you know, and I never spoke about yeah. it. Do you? You're like overcompensating yes, for others yes. while being yeah. selfless. And uh, it's not, I mean, it's not like egoing something, but because, but I had a lot on my shoulders, I felt like past yeah. years. Well, and I can see how, and I think this happens to people when you, when you're a person who gives a lot, and it sounds like you are that person, maybe you are that person again. Um, if you're not getting that back from people, you can like, you can overwhelm yeah, like, yourself. That's really exactly quickly. what happened. Like this year, I felt like. My energy, like, I mean, I talked with psychologists too, and she told me that at some point you, you, you can't make up the energy, you know, that you use. And like, yeah. she always asked me like how much I put. And sometimes I would ask, I would say like 110%, 20, you know, mm-hmm. and then she said, yeah, now you have to like kind of recover it, you know, and yeah. that's kind of what I felt like I was trying to recover it. I couldn't put as much as I normally do. And I was very, um. Uh, and I was ask, like, I was trying to ask others to like get that energy back, but I was not really open about it. You know, I was yeah. I was expecting people to give that energy back, but it's not it's not something I can expect. I have to be really open mm. about it, and I really wasn't. So that's yeah. like big on me. Well, yeah, and in my experience, it's really hard because I think that there are two uh, there are two kinds of very just. There's a lot of kinds of people, but in this context, there are two kinds of people that I meet all the time. There are people who are super considerate and who similar to you put things out there, do things for people very selflessly and want to live in a world where other people do the same. And there are people like me, and I think, Mark, you're kind of like this too, where we're like, if you ask me to do something for you, I will jump over. Like, I'm I'm that kind of friend. I will show up for you thick or thin. If you don't, I'm assuming you're fine and I don't need to do anything for you. And like those two personality types like Mm. are always at conflict. So I totally get you. We we have the same, we've had the same thing on caster teams in the past. It's I've heard of this on teams as well. That's like, that's a really tricky thing to deal with. And the problem is, is that even though you're the person that's doing so much, it still feels kind of like the burden is on you to also be the person that then communicates yeah. to them that you need this thing. So it's like you're doing double duty there, which yeah. is... I felt a lot of it. And between winter and spring, like Freddie told me one thing that's like so true. And now that, you know, me like as a person, yeah. like, it's sometimes it's a blessing in a team and sometimes it's a curse yeah and that's something that just suited it so well like everything that was happening because sometimes you know we all felt like you know everything is going perfect we're gonna win it all and sometimes you know when everything was not going well and yeah i was not happy or like i was just you know we're we're all doing just bad and mm-hmm. stuff like it was just going down right yeah and i'm not saying that you know now if not if it's gonna go down you know if we're gonna do worse then we're gonna go all down I do not believe so, but because co- of how much I learned from the experience, especially like yeah. this split, like the spring split. So yeah, I'm just working ra- uh, right now around all of the things I learned. Cause I can tell you, like last time I talked to my psycholo- like the psychologist I got to work with, uh, mm-hmm. like I was speaking for like an hour and a half, and I still didn't say like half of the things I had like from my actual like thoughts about like yeah. what could be done there. So. Yeah, there's, I still processing a lot and I can see that I'm still like not uh, 100 myself, I would say with like how I want things to be, you know, like I'm still processing so much. I'm still, I'm still just trying to work it out, you know, so I actually yeah. can become, I can make use of all the things I learn, mm-hmm. so I can actually become just way better than I was. Dude, it's a process. That, that stuff's it's, hard. Yeah. And for most people, it's like a lifelong journey, you know, I, I, this is whatever I tell people. A friend of mine told me this when I was like 25. 
and I've been telling this to people ever since. It's like when you're 21, you're like, I've got the world figured out. 19 yep. year old me was an idiot. When you're 23, later. you're like, 21 yep. year old me was an idiot. I've yep. got the world figured out. And yep. I've been telling myself that every two years until I get 30. And I'm like, now I just say, I have no idea what's going on yep. at any <laughs> given point. I figure some stuff out. I unlearn it. I relearn it. I have no idea what's happening, yeah. man. It's just yeah, like, it, it, I'm the exact same. Dude. You're, like, like, I'm you're like, now, you're like, now 27 me, I've got it figured out. It's all up here. You're going to be 29. You're going to look back and you're like, works. oh my God, you I was a in moron. Three years, you're like, I was an idiot. What the hell is going on? Yeah, I was right. so cringe. Why did I act like that? Why did I treat people? Like, why did I? Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's no, a journey, dude. But it's really cool that you... Um, are taking those steps because I think in competition it's so easy to let everything be about the competition yeah. and to not be better it's because true. you as an individual want to be better but to be better as a competitor and I think min maxing your own mental health like that can take people down weird paths um, and so it's cool that you're also like you're you're still in the process and you're working on it not just for the team or the game or for your career but for yourself and i think that's yeah that's super cool so, sounds like you're unlocking you as a person more than just you as a player in yeah. front of your name like trimby you know now it's like the adrian's coming out a bit and you're being more of like a yeah. personality to yourself which i think can attribute to becoming a better player as well because once you're better uh, yeah. at understanding who you are and what you want and as much as much as you might not ever be able to figure that out properly you can like impact the people around you uh, on your team a bit better yeah and even if you're just figuring out what you don't like or don't need you yeah. know it's like it's all a process and that's uh, any step you take is going to be eventually will be positive if you keep working at it i feel like um yeah that said i mean focusing in on uh, one last little thing on koi do you do you feel like um is there anything you can say about like what the problems were because obviously we're still seeing koi struggle and it's a different yeah. team now different players and i and again the goal here isn't to drag people but just to kind of understand more of what might be going on with koi right now it's like can you talk at all about some of the changes that you wanted to see weren't there? Was it struggles in communication? Was it struggles in conflict resolution? Like what was, what was, what were some of the problems generally? And again, I don't want you to yeah, call out anyone sure, specific okay. that you felt like were going on with Koi that, that you weren't able to solve while you were there. I think for me, it was like just characteristics. Like I, I love all of those, you know, they're like yeah. my friends right now, like cute friends, like people that I spent so long time with. And some of them I still like, you know talk daily even because yeah. you know like i get to and yeah it's like the thing was like yeah as i said it's like really characteristic based thing because i'm the type of guy that loves to i like to talk not always because you know i have my times when i yeah. just don't want to be talked sure. to <laughs> but most of the times i want to talk through things i want to like like just try to you know make things done and not everyone is like this you know there's like yeah. such a different view so so different like just thought processes and I didn't really, this year, I didn't really get to understand all of the thought processes in mm -hmm. the team. And that was something that was like hard for me to just get through. Because if I didn't understand, like I had to start assuming things. And that's something yeah. I don't like. Because when I start assuming what other things, then I become very selfish, I would say. That's like my feeling. Sure. And that's something that I felt like was happening, you know, with like just everyone. And it's not something that is easy, you know, to work yeah. around. And I think a lot of probably players and teams struggle with that then yeah and that, i can and i can say from our experience from talking to other teams they do and that's like one of the big things that is that kills team environments is when you can't speak openly and you're in a position you where yeah. yeah you assume that this guy isn't coming you know or is, isn't doing this because he's lazy or whatever when in reality he's got another reason or he's more focused on another thing not to put words yeah, in your mouth exactly. but those are some examples that we've heard you know it's just when a guy dies 10 times in a game and he doesn't want to talk about it, you know, you assume he's just griefing, you know, rather than like talking about, oh, he has some misconception about how the early game is played and he keeps making the same mistake, no. you know, and it's, that's tricky. Like, that's a super tough thing to to solve. Do you think those assumptions just got worse over time and that's what it just came to? Like, you know, I think it was, yeah, it was not easy to like work around it or like all the time. And I think now, I mean, I would say that now they're doing better. That mm -hmm. I mean, regardless of the uh, like results, it's two weeks. You know, it's like yeah, the it, best it, of it, ones. They were actually, they were actually like being in like good position. Like most of their games, they were just mm -hmm. you know throwing out and like it happens. And I feel like for them, I think it's better right now how it is. Like trade, I feel like the trade that happened is like good for both because I think Advian helps them yeah. with like how things are that maybe I couldn't. I mean, I don't know because. I personally like uh, to talk a bit more about the trade. Like, I at the end of the day, I wanted to stay. Like, yeah. I, but it was not up to me sure. whether I stay or not. It was more up to the decision of what team actually needs the most. And 
I kind of appreciate that, you know, they also did thing and say, you know, that it's good to change because they saw me actually, like, they saw me actually struggling a lot, you know, and yeah. they felt like, yeah, maybe it's good for him to also make like a change of an environment, just change. Because I was asking myself if it's, if it's a me problem, if it's an yeah. environment problem, or it's just like combine, like combining everything together. Yeah. And that was something that was like a big struggle on my, well, in my head. And like credit to Advian when we talked to him, he's a big processes guy. And it sounds yeah. like processes might be some of what Koi needed. And we'll hope that that can help them in the week to come. But I'm sorry to hear that you weren't, um, that, you know, you, that you, there's a situation where you didn't want to go. Uh, I'm really glad that you ended up on a team that's doing well. I yeah. guess the question for me now is like, do you, you talked about, you and Fnatic haven't hit really hardships yet. You guys yeah. are doing great. So there's some part of conflict that we haven't seen yet that you probably haven't seen yet you don't know it's like the honeymoon phase yeah Yeah. but do you do you feel like you're getting more of what you need as a player at Fnatic right now like are you getting more support are people giving back the energy that you're putting in or maybe recognizing when you don't have the energy uh like what how how do you feel about the environment you've experienced i mean yeah like talking actually something that really really helped me is Mm -hmm. just moving just moving away to a different side of Berlin. That's I'm gonna talk about because it's like such a big thing <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah, you moved from Charlotte and Berlin. Yes, exactly. Yes. I moved from the west to east yeah. of yeah. Berlin, and for me, it's a day and night experience, like pretty yeah. much. Because I feel like a human now again. I feel like you know, <laughs> I live in because I didn't like Berlin so much. I yeah. I was not a fan of Berlin, but it's because I didn't know how to try use the communication well, like uh, like j- just the uh, public transport. Public well, transport, yeah. I went and overall. Yeah, I felt like everything is so far. I couldn't do anything, and now I'm here, like uh, like in the east. And yeah, I feel like I'm living my life. You know, even though I'm still like doing all the things I do, like I'm yeah. most of the time I'm spending playing games, like uh, playing League of Legends. You know, like either training or playing solo queue, and all the, also thinking. But now I have like I feel like I have so many options. You know, around me yeah. to do stuff, and also my off days feel so much better because I actually feel like I live in a. I live in an area that it's like lively, you know, there are actually people out there doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, like West and East, it's a bit weird in Berlin, I, it feels like. It's, it's very different. Yeah. yeah. So for those who don't know, West side of Berlin, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but it was basically the half of the city that was like bombed to shit. So it's all like new yeah. buildings, very modern architecture, exactly. very like clear, deliberate street planning. Whereas East Berlin is a lot of the stuff that remained. So the streets, it's a lot closer. It's a lot tighter. Yeah. Um, it's a lot dirtier, and I love I that. Too. Personally, it's a lot punkier, <laughs> like in Friedrichshain, Neukölln, etc. Charlottenburg feels like a very clean, almost yeah. um, like Nordic city, is what I would compare it to, like something like Copenhagen, whereas Friedrichshain uh, is much, um, much grittier. Yeah. It's uh, also got more like um, what's the word? Uh, not hospitality, like more restaurants and like it's denser, cafes. and so I think it, it definitely feels that way because there's still a ton of good food in Charlottenburg. It of just course, feels like yeah. it's more yeah. spread out. Yeah. Whereas, like in Friedrichshain, it's very much like where a lot of the it's clubs like are. Yeah. Everything feels super close. And the area where you guys are, where I used to live and where Mark kind of lives now, is like I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah. There's so much within walking and distance. The way I call it is like Charlottenburg, or like the way I work, uh, I where like I was living in it was the place when you went out like you go out and yeah. you work you just work yeah. there you know you're like, <laughs> you're like on the street to either work go to shop and buy something go back to apartment yeah and here when i leave my apartment i feel like i see people who are living you know they're yeah, actually yeah. living the day on like on the streets doing anything you know like going yeah. to like there's so many places you know like those tables that people are just sitting chilling yeah. drinking whatever they feel like and they're just hanging around, you know, and I didn't see it like so much there. And that's yeah, such a big change. feels, it's cleaner, but it also feels more sterile. It doesn't exactly, feel like yeah. people are, you know, out there living their best life and having their good time. I, I know what you mean. I, I yeah. But coming this, back, oh, yeah, you go, you go. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I think you're bringing it back there as well. But like this year just sounds like a lot of eye-opening personal growth Thanks. in the right direction, which is really yeah. important because all of the struggles that you may have had in Koi and like not finding the maybe right communication or being told the things that you were told towards the end of it and then being able to take that and apply it to yourself and yourself as a player going into Fnatic. I feel like everything's kind of moving in the right direction for you and you're straying away from this yeah. struggles and this hole that you were kind of stuck in in, in yeah. spring and winter. Do you, exactly. Do you feel like you got to kind of uh, hit the ground running, so to speak, with Fnatic? Because not only have you learned all these lessons, but you now... You don't have to worry about the baggage or the things that weren't said on Koi because you get to start with a team that doesn't really know you as much as a player. Yeah. That you get to you get to start from square one, but with all these lessons. That sounds super. Did it feel that way when you joined? That you're like, oh snap! Like new team. I get to be exactly who I want to be from the start, rather than having to like 
figure it out along the way and i know you said you're still learning but like more the person that you want to be yeah i mean the thing is it's so it's so eye-opening you know you go into a new team you're just a you're a newbie right like over there yeah. like when it comes to like structure wise and everything like you don't know how team works you don't know you don't know who's who's like uh who's doing how like how are their characteristics mm -hmm. and stuff you have to start like i wouldn't say try harding again but you have to like get into like the yeah. zone of the team you have to you have to earn your like rights kind of like in a, i mean i earn your rights like yeah, i yeah. feel i felt very welcome you for the prove first, yourself yeah bit, kind though. of yeah, yeah, yeah i get yeah. this way it's better and yeah <laughs> like that's 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 kind of how it felt you know like first days like i was just figuring i mean i'm still figuring out a lot you know like i can't I can't say after one month that I'm the best homies with everyone. Yeah, you know, like yeah, sure. I know everyone. I'm we like go way vibe, back. <laughs> yes, I'm vibing and stuff. It's still like a process, but uh, but uh, I've been enjoying it a lot because like meeting new people, getting to know new people, just yeah. trying to figure it out who like who's doing how and how are like, how are you you know the feelings and characteristics yeah. of specific people. I always like liked it, and I always was like, yeah, I was always happy to like try my best, you know, to like get to open someone so i can be also open with him and try to get like a yeah. good relationship uh, like around it and that's something that motivates me a lot right now yeah. and yeah as well like as you said like all of the bag like the baggage that i left like all of the lessons and like stuff mm -hmm. i need to like still like get to understand and learn now yeah like i'm trying to make use of it in fanatic and yeah there's a lot to process and i've been i felt like i've been doing well like i can see improvements in myself i can see that the things that i was struggling for example even this year that i've been doing better and mm -hmm. that's something that yeah i'm really happy about dude that's awesome like i just love the amount of, of positivity that you're experiencing because like this could have been a very different podcast if you were on a team that was struggling or a team environment exactly. that wasn't working for you because that's that's tough like you got you went from one team that has a ton of history and pedigree in europe and rogue slash koi to another and i think and then and yeah. it's a team that's now performing so i'm, I'm really happy that this yeah. has worked out as well as it has talking a little bit more about in game um i know some of this was said in pgl and in interviews already but i want to kind of recap some of it for the, for the audience who hasn't heard yet um you're super vocal. I was watching Cajal yeah. watch your voice comms yesterday. You're We're, screaming. You're I mean, so communicative. Razork sung your praises in some of those early interviews where he's like, it's great. I can just worry about hitting my camps good and playing well in the early game because Trimby is talking and communicating all the time. Um, do you see yourself like differently than how you were when you first started like have you always been this vocal i know oduwam i talked about it yeah, way back in the I mean, road days yeah. like I mean, it's it's kind of like this like i still think yeah the, the way you know they talked about it i still feel it too where like sometimes i think i mean i talk a lot but i don't want to do this like all the time you know i don't right now i think i'm just so excited that i actually got to I still have this feeling, yeah, actually, I got to find a team, you know, and I actually get to play the summer because I had the feeling I might not, you know, this year. So I'm just happy to play, you know, I'm yeah, happy yeah. to compete. And that's why maybe I'm like so, yeah, like so... Fired up. Yeah, fired <laughs> up, like completely. Because I don't want, like, I don't want to shout this much. Like, normally I try to be quite calm and because yeah. that's something that I learned from, like, my first year in Rogue. Like, when I was, like, uh, you call it shattering comms like when you when my comms were so loud and i was doing like i was saying so you much useless stuff yeah. yeah and nowadays i still think there are times you know in fanatic where i say stuff that it's not really that useful but i, I try to like mix it up you know like like i feel so many emotions while playing that I'm. I was telling every, my every team like I, I can't stop it. You know, sometimes I might say the biggest <laughs> bullshit you've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, I can't stop it. Yeah, like sometimes I heard that. <laughs> in, the, in the fights, you're just like, no, 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 yeah. we just keep going. I don't know. Like you know, and it's all started with the Ali No Flesh incident. You know, when like yeah. Ali started had like oh, yeah. you know, when I was calling Ali No Flesh and Ali started Insta flashes on my AD carry at the same moment. Oh. Uh, from there, I kind of like started to like figuring out how to make best comps, like yeah. how to just make good comps. And I still a lot to work, I think, because this year, this year I didn't really work too much around it because there was mm -hmm. other issues. So right now I have like more time and more, yeah, just more options to figure it out was the best. And yeah, Razork has been doing a really good job because, I mean, you can hear me most of the time because that's like the highlight comps, yeah. but I feel Razork is doing a really good job when and it I comes to we, comps. We heard it as well. Um, 
and again, we're limited. I think we could probably listen to whole game voice comms, but we haven't searched it out. So yeah. we're mostly watching highlights. Um, but we hear him a lot more yeah. in the late game. It feels like you guys work really well together from what we've heard in the late game in terms of calling fights, especially. I yeah. think also Humanoid is doing an amazing job. When he when he is in the zone and he like, you know, he, he the game is like he's kind of, you know, and he sees the the angle. It's like so easy to play. Like it's just, he just calls out everything that is possible on the map because he's really good when it comes to macro. So... Mm. it's just so easy to work and obviously oscar like he has his highlights and he yeah. always i really like how i can work with around it because even the first game that we played right when we did that cassante queue into trash hook it was, was him who, like I, I you know he said something and i'm already like it's so nice because i don't need to ask him for that he says stuff i'm just picking it up i'm gonna do this you know like yeah. if you're if you're confident about it i'm gonna do this and that's like that was so nice because it was Never planned. We never did it before. It's just like a random thing. And obviously Noah. I think Noah has been doing good. I think he has a bit different style of like macro. Because he has this Korean macro still a bit. And it's not easy for us to work around it. Because it's a a bit different how he views, you know, the game. So, But I still think he's doing a really good job. And nowadays as well, I feel like it's my first time ever in my career. When I feel like I have to take care of the like lane part Mm because every time i like every every team i've been to i always felt like ad care is the one that's supposed to you know like call out what he wants to do with the waves and we're still trying to make sure you know that me and noah are on the same page Mm -hmm. but obviously due to like language barrier and the way sometimes like noah is like really focused and then he has to speak in english how he wants things to be i have to think about about it for him you know and that's like a big thing because that's really important if i'm not gonna call something out that's important for bot lane nowadays in this meta the game <sighs> yeah. the game might yeah. be just yeah. over if yeah. i'm not bot good lanes, everything so that's like like that's something that you know it's new for me because i never was i always would take care of myself you know like how to support my team and my ad yeah. carry so i can work around but now i also need to kind of think of like how we actually want to make sure the g- the game from laning phase is also good for the whole yeah. team and us i had a, a similar thing in, in excel when you have like one korean player on your team oftentimes when you have two it's a bit easier because they can like talk exactly. to each other but when you have one and you, you spend so much time with them like i spend so much time with expect you probably spend a lot of time with yeah. noah not just like in the game but outside the game Every time they're in like reviews or they're trying to say something in game, you kind of already pick up on what they're trying to say when other players don't yes. because you know them so well. Do you have that with Noah already? Uh, I have it, uh, but I think it's more because of how I st- tried to work with Marang. Like this one and a half year with Marang helped me so much now working with Noah because sometimes he says like, I mean, I would say like the stupidest words possible to like uh, to explain like a yeah, simple thing because exactly. he just doesn't remember the, the, the vocabulary. Yeah, yeah it's hard. It's, it's yeah. normal, right? And I kind of pick it up already, you know, like I pick up what he wants to say and I'm trying to explain my team what he actually means by that because yeah. I already understand this kind of thought process behind how he wants, how he tries to find the words. Mm. But it's a bit different too because Marang is not so, he's not, he's not so talkative, I would say, while Noah he likes to talk so right. much and it's in just your, characteristic in, like, in your <laughs> in your voice comes you're like yeah we're gonna go top he's like okay i drink water yeah. <laughs> like, cool man like yeah, i didn't know if you want to say uh, that yeah. but yeah we want to waste a little bit of time <laughs> okay, Tom, okay sure drink that water i'm really fine like, the funny but, thing was you could see his camera as well he was just like in the comms okay i drink water and he's just like that and trimby's just laughing like <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, it's really fun he's so lovely <laughs> that's like and you got to start somewhere too and that's you know better to be i, I in my experience from what i've seen at least uh too vocal than not vocal enough because i think it's way it's easier to get people to talk less it's way harder to get people to talk more i feel like from what i've seen yeah um it's very true do you see yourself as a leader now in terms of like how you're directing Mm -hmm. the team in game i know it's like a by the idea of a shot caller is very historic prehistoric even back to like season three high yeah yeah. um not that he wasn't that just it's not really like everyone's communicating i know but it it feels to me like you're taking you were always trying to put a lot of take a lot of responsibility and give a lot out but now you're you're such a veteran player and we see the immediate contrast of you coming into Fnatic. and i know it's not just you i know it's a team-wide effort but that's you you and Noah are the easiest points for people to grasp but it really to me feels like you're a guy who's kind of often directing the flow of the game, communicating, bringing people in. Do you see yourself as as like a leader of a team or? Uh, I mean, I still think the leader thing is kind of fake and a cup pretty much. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, uh, to me, it's just a cup because it oh, everyone can pick up the game. Everyone can step up and just make yeah. the game easier. But for me, I think I just learned how to 
enable everyone how to make sure that I, that they can facilitate well in the game yeah. and that's just something i'm trying to like work around because i think it's like the easiest way for me to make sure everyone is involved in the game and yeah sometimes i might ask too many questions sometimes i might ask <laughs> stupid questions in game but yeah if people then start you know thinking about what to do and that just helps the whole team then why not and yeah I wouldn't say that I'm the guy who decides all the time. I feel like sure. it's more on humanoid rasp, I would say, because I always feel like it's more on carries to like say actually what they want. Because yeah, me as a support, I don't sometimes see like I don't always know how much gold they have. I don't see their thought well, process. It, it but... would also be weird for you to be like, oh, you have three items. I know exactly yeah. how much damage your character does in this context. Yeah, having but it, never it, played a game exactly. of Ophelios in my life. You know, like it would yeah. be weird. It would be odd. But yeah, I guess I could say like I'm a bit of a leader when I. Like, I just try to make sure everything yeah. works well. Like, you know, it's a well-oiled machine. Sure. And, like, that's kind of what I mean. I don't mean, like, shot caller, yeah. like, you're the the mastermind again. I think that's kind of an old-school way of looking at it. Exactly. Um, but just, like, it sounds like some of those leadership qualities, at least, are really coming out in you, which yeah. I think is, is super yeah. cool. I think the the whole, like, notion behind, like, the leadership or, or, like, the qualities that have been provided to Fnatic from you to make them better is, like... If you look back a few months ago, Fnatic was in such a drought for wins. They yeah. were struggling so much. The fan base was leaving. They were up in arms. Fnatic just looked like it was crashing. Yeah. And now learning about you having these personal struggles and struggling in core, you sound like things are going slowly downhill as well. Or maybe over time, it's just getting worse and worse. And you take the two together and you put it into like a recipe. And all of a sudden, like Fnatic's just breathing so much life. It's like life. a rom-com, yeah. it's, dude. It's, it's like the, the fan base is back. Your comms are going crazy. Fnatic's winning games like everyone's just got so much faith in you guys now and although you lost to g2 people oh, still yeah. you know they're like believing you know but they're like you watch that g2 game things look like they were going well I mean, just some of yeah. the team fights were a bit sketchy no they just i mean we grifted so much in early like you know the team comp that we had it was so like if we play execution like we always do i think we would actually stomp them no joke yeah. because of how actually well we played early minutes but then we griefed everything that yeah, we early after. Yeah, early you got bot and mid flash. Then you, your Lucian got cancelled on yeah, the base, right? Yeah, and from there, everything went the downhill. Canceled, everything just, yeah. went downhill. And yeah. you might think it's like a small thing, but it's really... It just... It's so hard, like, really. Like, <laughs> yeah. all the, like from that onwards, <laughs> like, it's so hard to play when you have, like, good plan in mind and then you cannot do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously then it started by me dying to, like, a level 6 Aphelios that he just got. Like, that shit should never happen, you know? Like, yeah. stuff yeah. like this. And, yeah, from there, I mean, we died. So, like, two easy, t two big team fights we lost. Then the game is so hard, you know? Like, you're trying... Like, I was trying my best to figure out how to win it, but from there... Like it was, it just looked like a storm because there's literally nothing we can do with the team with the champs we had and stuff. And yeah, yeah it's sad that it was against G2 like this, but you know, well, maybe now they think that you but know, people have looked past it, which is important. People yeah, are like, you know nice. what? And yeah, also, like, again, if you're going to drop a game, even if it's in a lackluster fashion, like I, I always think that the best team to drop games against are the, the better teams in the league, at least from a public perception standpoint, because you can lose a game to G2 or Mad Lions yeah, and no sure. one's going to bat an eye. Of course. You know I, mean, I mean, I don't mind losing. Like I would look, I could lose the game to like anyone if you know, if I will learn a lot, like I think we learned a lot out of that yeah. game. And that the one good thing is that I feel like I learned so much from the wins too. I feel like we as a team, we don't really, we're not going like ego, you know, oh man, we're 5 1, we don't need to like think about much. We're so far ahead. We're learning so much nowadays, do, do every day. Like this momentum all sounds like fantastic, right? And I think a lot of people are like buying into the whole Fnatic idea, but there's yeah. still like a long road to go, right? Of you course, guys, like yes. the team has really low championship points. To make the world is already quite difficult. You need to be, you need to be really high top. up in the standings. You basically, like, obviously, first is the only way to guarantee it 100%, but yeah so it's it's t you need to basically be top three do, do you yeah. think like your struggles in koi in the last two or three years uh, just playing the lec do you do you have a good idea of how you want to keep the momentum going because eventually like the honeymoon i think the honeymoon phase is so like yeah. it happens so often but obviously there's either a crash after it or there's just a plateau yeah do you think that there's ways that you've figured out maybe that you're trying to implement to like manage it it sounds like i'm saying you're the coach here but you know yeah. the idea of like making it so the players is this something that you more? think about yeah i guess is a, yeah, is a good starting point yeah for sure because i think i mean even before i could see fanatic was so momentum based you know sometimes they had like weeks when i thought they're actually good you know yep. and then they would go downhill like right immediately right before yep. in winter and spring split so now i feel like the most important thing for me is just figuring out the way so everyone actually like enjoys being there you know and just yep. regardless if it's gonna be good or bad like i don't really care if we're gonna start losing now or not if you know if we manage to pull it through and get you know to the to the final season get to worlds and possibly win everything after and 
I really don't mind because that's kind of also what happened like before Mamo. Like we are getting <laughs> the yeah. dog. Like it does not look into the, the, the miracle. Go the miracle trip to Sweden that yeah. gave you guys like the confidence and the Sweden, consistency. Baby. Even, <laughs> even <laughs> after the first game against Fnatic, everyone was like, "Yep, yeah, they're screwed. It, it's just over, guys. Nothing <laughs> they can do. Like, yeah. It's just over." <laughs> I mean, I felt a bit too. Like after that game, I was like, "Holy, we're actually doing well." And then, that was when we did the first Euphoria. The day after that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it yeah. actually was. And yeah, I mean, we didn't do well. I mean, the scrims started being better, you know. But before that, all of the process, like, it's been up and down. Like, and that's kind of how it can feel. So I don't want to have like, you know, I wouldn't like to have like now like a complete winning streak and then waiting in the finals. You know, I would like to, you know struggle a bit if it's possible if they you know the teams will be getting mm. better and better in LEC yeah. and I want to like yeah be contested so we can learn from that and if not then I'm still hopeful because I feel like we're learning so much anyway yeah. if the, when we're winning like after this game against uh, we we had a game against Vitality right last yeah. one that mm -hmm. we had we could have won that game so much faster if we were actually playing better. Like, <laughs> yeah. they were, like, they were, they should have, we should have ended so much faster. And that's something that I really like that all the teammates feel like it. We're not, like, you know, just happy we won. We should have completely, like, obligate them like just make yeah, yeah just yeah. make sure that oh yeah i remember this game they, yeah <laughs> yeah we, just, we should have made sure that they, they cannot like do anything and yeah. you know like it's not easy with our team come too, but for sure we should have done stuff better. And I see that we're, you know, we see we're working around yeah, it, and we're making sure we we will do that. Is it mainly like you're alluding to like after that mid fight when you had like four kills or something? Like the game should just be a steam yeah, or... like the mid game, you know, when you can just get Nash faster or like just do stuff around like macro wise. You know, it's more macro wise. We were very. I don't think we're that doing that good calls. Like after mm -hmm. you know every wave should have a meaning. Mm -hmm. You know this stuff. Like not we didn't do as much and. We know, like we know about it, and that's a good thing. Yeah, you said Noah has like just a quick touch on the macro idea. Now Noah has like this different idea of macro because it's like the Korean idea of macro. Are you guys going like leaning into him and being like, you know what, let's try something like that? Or are you like, no, let's just do EU uh, macro I full fight? I think he has good, uh, like a lot of things he says is good. Yeah, but sometimes I think he. Uh, he ton of visions on some stuff and I think it's just because he's a rookie still like I mean not rookie I mean he played in the CK like quite a bit of games like 35 I think but yeah, it's just it, yeah in KT yeah. but I still think you know he like everyone has a lot to learn because I think both Noah and Oscar they're quite new to like mac yeah. like all of the macro especially in LEC how it works and me Humanoid and Razork we're kind of already like understand each other and like macro basis we have maybe a bit different views because of the teams differences right like my human was in mud lions Razor was in misfits i was in rogue so all three of those teams were a bit different in macro like um the way they played macro and i think now we just have to make sure we're like you know all like make it yeah. all possible mm -hmm. and yeah. try to think of it together and regardless of how much time you've spent playing i feel like you're gonna come in with a different idea yeah. of what macro good macro looks like and noah probably has a different idea but i think once you add a language barrier it makes sense to me that it's just going to take more time to get on the same page yeah. you know what i mean if you've learned to value something more through your experiences whatever that is you know like i don't know in your inspired area maybe it was just playing for jungle or whatever you're going to assume by default that's what you should be doing you know it's going to take time to, yeah to change that Break and take time to uh to adjust that and probably double or triple that time when there's you know, there's a language barrier because like no matter what someone says to you, uh, you know, you still have to untrain and unlearn everything that you did before or adjust the way that yeah. you think. And, and that's always just going to be open mind, open mind. And that's going to be a process. It's 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 hard to. Yeah, it's just, it's just something's going to take time. But despite that, <laughs> I mean, Noah's popping up and that's what's crazy. It's like you guys are like, oh, we're not always on the same page. And I'm like, Karina, boy. Really it's like, it really seems still, yeah. like, uh, yeah, he understands what he's doing in fights pretty yeah. good. He goes know? forwards, he baby. He goes forward. He, <laughs> he kills click, people. He clicks pretty well forward. He I clicks, agree. He clicks I agree. pretty good. Like when, I, when I saw you guys laning against that Rakan and he like sidestepped the Rakan level 1W no. forward. So I was like, yeah, this guy is just a psycho. Like, just give Did him you? the... This I guy's know, gonna... Yeah, the, the two, even I was like, yeah, that is pretty good he's pretty damn good <laughs> yeah, he's so <laughs> oh it's good and uh it's nice because um, but it's still like yeah as i said the, we're still not clicking all together you know we're not making the same clicks together still yeah and there's gonna like it will take a while and i don't know if we're gonna you know get there for sure or not because it's not easy to as a bot lane duo to play like the same way you want and play on the same page like right now i think 
a lot of laning phases we're not playing as well as we could and yep. i think we both understand it and even though right now people say we're like top two in the league like i don't know what it says about the league if they say this and <laughs> yeah, yeah like yeah. we I, I can feel that you but know it, we're, yeah. we're really like there is work to do you know because yeah. like we for sure we for sure there will be for sure games where we will not do well and like the laning phase will not be great but i think nowadays bot lanes i don't know why but like the level kind of dropped on bot lane with like how aggressive you are as a bot lane i don't feel like people are uh, like trying to f you know fight you back when you make a mistake mm -hmm. they're kind of just like yeah I, I don't know why he did that but you know i'm gonna when, when did you notice that drop uh, i don't like this i mean i think now when i play with noah i noticed that drop because me and comp we didn't do that well so it was hard to tell but i think now it's just how the game is played i feel like it's so bot bot centric a lot of times that you just have to like you just have to be on top all the time and i think nowadays with half of the team struggling like i feel like like it just gets on every player you know it's easy to see when a player just is not himself because the team mm. is just not do doing well and you can see it in laning phase it's like very simple like just to see how he clicks how uh yeah what is his mindset you know yeah because if he's a mind if he has the mindset that he's there to win you'll see this you know mm. but if he sees the mindset that He's yeah i'm going even yeah i don't know i don't know man are they really trading it like does. this yeah and it, it is like this and it's a bit weird but i guess maybe i say this because i played like already two, at two worlds right mm -hmm. and my practice sometimes like we'll just get you know like yeah, a, a, yeah, yeah. every second game it was hard <laughs> but you know then we, we would actually fist back you know like yeah, yeah. and it, we would be i would be so happy you know and nowadays like yeah i think when screams were doing really well like laning phase at least but for sure, we have to make sure we're like doing similar stuff in officials. Yeah. And, and I just from watching, it does feel like, I don't know, but it doesn't feel like everyone has a firm grasp on the meta is what I'll say. Like people don't look confident as confident in this meta a lot of the times. And I don't know if that's just a matter of I, if I'm just feeling that because people aren't as aggressive in making plays. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not sure why 100% why I feel that way. But it does seem to me like despite a lot of tenets of the meta remaining similar, like a lot of the same core things, I know there was a ton of uh, systemic changes yeah. in the game, like the mid wave thing, et cetera. Um, like people are definitely not taking chances that are more reliant on their skill I in the early game. I just think there's play. so many mistakes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm over reading into it, but like when I see some dragon fight set up, someone's just like that. There's always that one guy just doing something different. Like maybe they're on the wrong side of the map it's, when they should obviously yeah, be on the other side. I don't know. It just feels like some basic mistakes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that with 13, 13 and as we get to best of three, that the level's going to kind of shoot up. Cause I don't think it's on, it's not like there are two teams at the bottom dragging our league down. Like, I don't think, yeah. I think there's a lot of teams that are playing really not i mean there's a four way do we have the standings it's like a four way, -way tie, tie for six. sixth yeah oh my days yeah yep. um but i'm hopeful that that gets better as we get into best of three and as we get into a new patch and people are kind of forced to relearn again because i think the problem with this patch is it's just similar enough to the last patch that you're not like really like outside of static shift stuff really trying too hard to like super duper innovate yeah um yeah. but just not similar enough that there's like that it doesn't feel like people have a firm grasp, if that makes sense. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it does. I think, I mean, the big thing is for sure the format change this year. Yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't put any blame because, like, it's so entertaining, I feel like, for, sure. like, viewers. But and it's all, hard. It's hard and very stressful, I think, for a lot of teams. Because, for instance, this uh, this part, right, The like, it felt like most of the teams figured out the meta and then, boom, one team picks LeBlanc static and seems like half the teams don't didn't even know about it first yeah. day it's really stressful because you just then you can lose Damn. like one week you know and then it's zero free and you feel bad you know you just feel yeah. so bad after if like only that games one like team that. didn't pick leblanc yeah to like pack off just ruining the meta for you know and the, thing is that, the funny thing is like that one team only got one win yeah. from that one game <laughs> so like you say to yourself if leblanc static wasn't meta would they be zero six no. right now oh, no. <laughs> like it's it's I, I crazy know. you know i don't know i, I don't know what's going on but the yeah of it is like a thing right also we have one less uh scream day because of the yeah. fact like how the schedule looks like so it's less practice everything is stressful so probably the screams are not as ideal as you'd it's like it's also double officials. unlucky because in this split especially there's already pressure so much yes. pressure but there's like 10 times the pressure in this split especially if your team like fanatic yeah. who doesn't have that many championship points and then we're also doing possibly the biggest patch jump we've ever done in the middle of a split for this format which is 
yeah, 11 or 13 Ivern. 11 to 13 13. Oh, he's getting gonna nerfed. Thank God. Well, yeah, there's going to be Ivor. But it's on 13 14, he's getting nerfed, right? Wait, there's no way they're I, not bro, nerfing I him. Yeah, I don't. No, no, no. I live on 13. I live please, on 13 please, 11 until nerf stop. That. I live on 13 11 until 13 13 comes out. Please, I don't want to. Uh, I really heard he's getting nerfed, so hopefully he gets. If not, yeah. Oh yeah, on 13 13 he's uh, getting nerfed. Oh thank you. yeah. If, if he didn't, catch-ups. I would pull it off. Oh, I would miss, pull it off on dude, support. In LCK, I don't care. in LCK they're playing Ivern right now. So right, we're gonna no. miss the Ivern team. Big. Yeah, you're right. It's it, like 13 13 is big because Ivern gets nerfed. Yeah, but Kindred, 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 Kindred gets nerfed. Kindred, Kindred, gets nerfed. Yeah. Like Kindred by Nico. The Samira thing with Duskblade is also getting part, so she doesn't Duskblade. She Stabbed doesn't try to Duskblade and ult all the time. Like it's Do you know the best thing about this whole patch is? What's the best? Lee Sin buffs. Oh my god. My one ah, but those back, are maybe. so disgusting. Like, this champ was fine, right? No, it's it wasn't. okay. <laughs> when Lee Sin has a 48% win rate, you know something's wrong. Uh, okay. I think these are, these are what I like to call fandom buffs. There's just so much of the League of Legends players that are like thirsty Lee Sin. I've one been trick. thirsty for it for six <laughs> months. They're like, all right, I guess we got a buff. We got to appease the, the yep. filthy, six unwashed Lee Sin players. And now I'm. Uh, oof. Kedja had to pull off his AD care and now he can finally back to playing. Yeah, that's what I did. They saw me playing Aphelios. Uh, and like, this is so, like, they saw me griefing yeah, everyone. This is so <laughs> disgusting. How do we bring him back to how reality? Do, how do we... <laughs> How do we get him out of this role? He's literally <laughs> ruining this role for everyone. We can't ban him because he's actually thinks, trying. He's actually single-handedly <laughs> he's making trying. people think AD carry is a useless role. Um, we have to bring Jungle back. How so is he unironically 15 deaths a game <laughs> while Jeez. trying to win? Oh, yeah, buff Leeson fixed. Yeah, while trying to win, sure. All right, no, calm down. No, the neg- <laughs> no, neg- no negative gaming on the affiliates. No, uh, no negative gaming at all. Positive gaming only. Positive gaming. Positive was it Jackie Love? Who did that? Was it that Jackie it Love? Was, yeah. Jackie Love. The Good negative. old Jackie Love. <laughs> um... I love Jackie Love. Let's talk about some other teams because yep. you guys are doing well. You guys are already locked. Um, you're doing good for Ooh. top eight. We'll yeah, hope the momentum keeps going cool. and we can talk to you in the future about best of threes coming up, et cetera, et cetera. But there's one more week of games. Uh, let's talk about your schedule first. BDS, Team Heretics, SK. Based on recent performance, uh, he just flashed the tier list at you. Ignore that. We don't no. talk about that. <laughs> no, we're just going to pretend <laughs> we don't talk about that. Um, the, the, the best meme from that tier on, list is BDS yes, tier. <laughs> 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 oh my god <laughs> well, we had a misread uh yeah um shout out to adam by the way who uh who wasn't able to play i hope he's feeling better um despite that bds have obviously had a rough split team heretics had a really great week one had a not so great week two courtesy of the euphoria buff that's a meme and it's xl not a thing. was the opposite S- xl had a 3 week but let's start by talking about your schedule is there any game that you're particularly like focused on if you had to pick one to really hardcore prep for this week is it um, is there I any mean, particular team you're you're more worried about the thing is that uh we're having it we're having actually the a match of the week versus heretics i was slightly shocked when it happened like not to be ma- uh, not to be mean to heretics because i mean obviously they had like a bad second week they had really good first week yeah it's just I've, I was, yeah, I mean, I was shocked that, you know, but I guess, uh, I guess we're just going to play against them. And Yankos has been playing really well, I think, anyway, regardless of their losses. And I think they've been doing better than last split. So that's going to be quite interesting to see how they, like how we managed to play against them. Yeah. But I think other games, I mean, I wouldn't like to drop any if that's possible, but... You know, like, we'll see how it goes. Like, BDS <laughs> for sure. Like, BDS is, has to be hungry, you know, to win. Like, after all of those losses they had, because some yeah. of the games were very... Just sad for them, I would say. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. yeah, it's same for SK. Like, if SK wants to even get... Yeah, get to play, like, later playoff thingy, like, they, they need to win. Yeah. So, those teams... Yeah, we need to be aware and we need to make sure that we're not dropping the ball. It, and, yeah, we'll see. Is there a t- So, last split, obviously, Mad Lions finished 8th. Yeah. and won the split is there a team that you're looking at in the in the standings right now where you're like well they're probably going to finish eighth but they're pretty damn good uh pretty damn good wait let me think who's your I dark think, horse basically i think i'm not sure how astralis will do after the big patch change because i know they're struggling with this uh, with the current patch they're just yeah. struggling i heard and now like when i saw the patch changes i felt like maybe it's gonna be good for them with like how the things you know like support being a bit better like i think it might be an engage meta not really an enchanter meta anymore mm-hmm. so maybe maybe those will like come back and you know maybe they'll like they're kind of thriving in it right just yep. leader picks some yasuo then the <laughs> young comes with like a little alistar <laughs> now to lose Leona, no just, yeah, <laughs> yeah just come just come mid try to help out and that might be you know there may be way but i wouldn't say I don't know if they're like maybe Mad Lions, you know, maybe Mad Lions will like be a bit better with like some of the changes, but then there's like 
some uh, some I think there's like Lissandra got like huge buffs too and like some other like there's some really random changes now that came out that I'm not sure who's gonna be on top you know I think with the list change. might be 14, I think we'll be 12. I think we'll be really good in the patch yeah I think that at uh, the patch that is happening it will be good for us yeah. I think there's a lot of nice buffs for us sure but yeah I don't know other teams it's hard for me to imagine is there any team uh that we've seen struggle on stage that you've played against that you think has been doing really well on scrims that's kind of caught you off guard with like how poor their stage performance yeah. has been is there what, what team do you think mm. that you've experienced so I far mean, has the do biggest we have the contrast standings? we can reopen yeah, yeah. just stay on the standings here for a minute because like because this is i think I, we talk about the overall level right now and i expect it to go up and there are some great moments for mm. sure but there's a lot of games that are chaotic but i'm curious if there's any team because with think... so many teams playing yeah fast and loose on stage it's kind of hard for us to tell who i would say who's really i good. would say vitality I would really say Vitality, even how bad they look. Yeah. I still think, like, the way sometimes they, like, do stuff in draft, for instance, it's it's really annoying to play because, you know, boys, the kind of guy who plays the carries, and yeah. sometimes the carries fit well, the team comp, yeah. and then it's just annoying to play against, right? And they're also, I would say they're better in scrims, like Vitality for sure, than on stage. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, as you can see, like, the way they played macro sometimes, it's not ideal. It's far from ideal, so... <laughs> Yeah. yeah that's and that's also what's happening in scrims but obviously they're like they they're, they're a team that when they get lead they're like doing good yeah but they're also a team that on stage when they get lead sometimes they just throw it away so easily yeah so yeah. i don't know about them but outside of it i think excel has been doing better than at scrims outside Dude, for three, sure three zero yeah. do that's you nice. believe in the excel miracle run i mean all those right there so i know yeah, i know it's a miracle right there for sure for sure he did sure. the shalka one he did the rogue yeah, one yeah, to the championship just rebuilding the shalka miracle just, run he's just showing this there yeah. like let's let's do it he's showing the tattoo of the of the maokai's e you know and he's yeah. like yeah that's that's the shalka miracle run now about to be the excel mm -hmm. right? the excel miracle run. yeah they're, like, they should be fine it's think, a kasante tattoo i think excel gets one more win in there basically finding four is easy to to get in the only weird thing i think about this one is coming into week three you got four teams tied in sixth. You yes. got Vitality, who's like slumping, but should be doing better. And everyone's kind of wondering when they're going to wake up. But also these teams like Astratus, Koi, <laughs> We've been wondering SK. this entire okay, true. year. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> two years. <laughs> oh uh, then the four-way tie, they all kind of play against each other. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a whole, apart from SK, who has like G2 Mad Fnatic or something, or, or was it Heretics? One of the teams has like a SK really... Has a hot SK has a yeah, SK, SK has Astratus, Fnatic. Mad Fnatic, yeah. Yikes. Uh, Heretics is the one with uh, Mad Fnatic and G2, so they're the ones. <laughs> but they should be all right with all wins. Vitality, G2, Astralis. So they're, they're destinies in their own hands. So do we make... Is this where we say, like, who yeah, we think's going to make it? This is, this is the content that people... <laughs> this if is people the content, right? aren't interested in Fnatic or Trimby, which is crazy to me, but if they're not, then they just want to know who's going to get eliminated. Yeah, so, so they can, they can like, hold us accountable and be like, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we miss, we've, we've missed already, it like, we're going to go to jail at this point if we keep saying dumb stuff. Like, we, Bro, we're, uh, even if I stand by our stage, statements around bds we ho oh, bro oh. i don't I, look, after these three or two weeks they're one hit I wonders think, uh, we <laughs> I were wrong in a lot off. of ways <laughs> yes i'm not saying that our our logic came true i'm just saying there was a logical basis for but you know it's BDS like so if high. they make it to finals we're gonna be like huh <laughs> we no, knew it no i won't say that <laughs> that, that was because our entire basis of analysis was they would be really good on the patch where nothing changed and they could do the exact same thing <laughs> yeah okay. and then they weren't so yeah. if we're double wrong no by yeah, the way we're, we're bds we're win wrong, the split we're double wrong because <laughs> we're, we're wrong about why they were good and then they were bad and then if we think they're bad now we're going to be wrong about why so they now won the, split. the final question is just to sold this out sorry chimby oh, are you predicting ours. bds to be bottom two <laughs> just to come full circle <laughs> <laughs> oh my shit uh, were, i think that's sk what s was uh, they were s tier okay. man they were s tier Come they on. were s tier well, s is for sucks <laughs> oh sometimes see you next year oh no, no. i'm sorry no, i'm not because the bds players it's the bds players aren't at fault for us ranking them so highly i feel like no. they're getting extra flack because we, we put, them, put so them so highly that's maybe that's our bad and yeah. i and they have had a disappointing split so far given how good they were at the end of spring so i just don't want our banter about it's overrating crazy, them it? to turn into hate for those players because you know They've got their own problems separate honest, from uh, like us the, overrating. The reason them. I say this is because BDS is in my bottom too. Like I think they're out. I think they they play against you guys. Yeah. They play against Mad Lions, and they play against Vitality. So I think like one win is what you can rely on against you can Vitality. Rely on but maybe can you even win. rely on that? So if you lose to Vitality, that's it. I think you're done unless they can beat you guys or Mad, which obviously is going to be a bit of a struggle. Yeah, sure. Is Adam coming back this weekend? I don't know. If Adam's not coming back, then 
I think, yeah, that's a horror. That's tough. And I mean, that's, those are the kind of like BDS split was already hard before Adam had any medical complications. And I don't a hundred percent know what's going on with Adam. Um, yeah, but like, I, I just hope that he's better, but yeah. that sucks. Like that's just I- insult to injury. You know what I mean? Um, so I'll say SK, I feel like is my safe bet. They have, again, they have mad and fanatic similar to, uh, actually what BDS have crazy. Yeah, you guys are gatekeeping a lot of people. You guys, you, you, I mean, it's like say, you and Matt. Don't with jinx just, it, don't you, it. Okay, I'm gonna jinx yeah. a little bit though, because to me, it's like, you know, just just trying to be SK, just trying yeah. to be BDS, just trying to get into top eight. That's all you're trying. And then it's like <laughs> you mean, with yeah. the steel chair, and then it's like Nisky with the steel chair and from a Matt different angle. Top robe, yeah. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> the script has really did this, them this guy, Yeah, this they, they, people are not <laughs> oh absolutely God. not ready for the gatekeeping yeah. that you're about to do for this top eight. Um. But yeah, I mean, I feel like if BDS, I mean, Vitality are also on my list because Vita- I, yeah. I, Vitality, it's actually hard to say who's going to get knocked out 100%. Um, one of SK Gaming or BDS, but I don't have faith in Vitality. So I'm going to say BDS makes it in. But how do they make it in? No, God, it's so hard to predict <laughs> they beat this. Vitality. Well, they beat yeah, Vitality. That's yeah, true. BDS yeah. make it in by beating Vitality and just barely barely crawling their way in okay. just barely like so i don't want to say that i have a ton of confidence so in you're saying team. vitality's out and, and SK. sk's out what yeah. do you think should be i kind of wanted to go with this too because i uh, i mean i don't know about bds <laughs> like they, like that's the thing like you know i would like also koi to go but obviously they are not doing that great but i, I have the biggest hope for them for sure mm. out of all the teams because i mean all of this koi plays vitality which if they're getting knocked down makes sense that's where koi would get a win and they have like those yeah g2 Ast- very hard and, and then astralis, astralis which it's i like, think is doable we no th- this is doable like that's the thing i mean all their teams yeah they have rougher time for sure i would say i mean it is i don't know like it's weird like i could say even escape bds because there is a chance team vitality gets you know because they play right they play us they do they play australis too vitality BDS? B- plays, uh, no, vitality. Uh, xl bds and koi but i mean xl won three games but before that they looked yeah really bad so but it's like you never know that's the thing i would say i mean uh, to be fair i could just drop you know sk and bds but i i would say like safest is just sk and team vitality but Damn. i don't know it's just yeah I'm going to say BDS SK. And I'm also going to preface well, it with saying if Vitality don't make top 8 this split, I will, for the remainder of my casting career, never believe in Vitality forever. Holy. Because I believed in them last year. I believed in them at the start oh, of this I year. Believed I believed so in them times. in winter and so spring, times. giving them the benefit of the doubt for more time. So and then I also kind of felt like in summer, you know, they've had a long break from MSI. Both been learning English, Photon's been learning. Maybe it's, maybe it's better, but it's worse. And it's only yeah. getting worse. So I'm going to say... They don't make it now. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I hope that this Vitality can make it. I hope that their faith, your faith in them will be justified and that they can... Actually, top two gets to pick who they play against, right? No, pick so what group, what they, group go they go into. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It goes like this. I wish they got a draft groups. I hope we can see that change in the future because then I'd feel much more like top one and two really matters because you can just make yourself a wild group. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well. Um, schedule coming out this weekend. Kicking things off as we wrap up here. Uh, bu- 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 Fanatic playing BDS day one. So many stakes. Yes. Two teams are gonna die. There's bottom of the standings is so close. It's it's, it's, it's gonna it, be I don't crazy know if it's ever tight. been like this close, but this last week is gonna be an absolute clown fiesta. Yeah. 1730 ready check on Saturday, 1745. Like your guys' day. last game of the of the splits, SK Fanatic could uh, decide their entire fate. That's crazy. It's <laughs> Again, gatekeeper, steel chair, bam. <laughs> or or in the dramatic WWE twist. You know? Yeah, you never know, actually. You never know. That's the mm. thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this split, yeah, I still will say that, you know, every team can beat anyone, even though it doesn't look like it on yeah. stage. Yeah. And yeah, that's a really crazy thing. That's such yeah. a crazy it's thing. It's weird, because I feel like about. the league's been, cr- ever since, like, the collapse of old G2 and Fnatic in 2018, 2019, it's just been, like, the kings are dead. Everyone just runs around having fun. And then G2, like, 2021 didn't work. Fnatic could never really work. Mad Lions was doing good. 2020 was, doing was good. also pretty... Yeah, 2020 was 2020 all, yeah. was like was more cool. consistent. Like, everyone was yeah. running free. And now it's it was like, like it was more contested in 2020 for sure though. Like Rogue and Mad Lions were both doing good work. Yeah, and now it's like G2 and Fnatic are like you guys are back up again. Yeah. But everyone's still running free. <laughs> so like That's really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Why is everyone the same win rate? Like can we all like figure out who's good? Figure, now? That's, and again, God bless best of 3. Imagine there's just four more weeks of best of one after this. Oh my god. Yeah, can you imagine? 
Yeah, it looks like this left. <laughs> yeah, like, what? Yeah. what was he gonna imagine? Yeah, yeah but no, it's, it's, it's like it's like you taste the good candy and yeah. you're stuck with the bad candy, but you taste the good candy. You know, it's like the I'm really best of three. I think best of three is where we actually start to get to see how good teams really are. Yeah. Right now, it's just don't be the worst. You know, that's like your only goal in these first three weeks, and we'll see who the worst <laughs> two teams are. Um, it will be sad reminder when these teams go out. Like, don't pile on the hate train. Be be kind because they're obviously trying. It will not have worked, and they will now wait for six months to play League of Legends. Yeah. It is brutal to be eliminated at this stage, no matter how good or bad your year has been. So. Hearts out to whoever it's going to be in the end. Regardless, this weekend's kicking off. I'm hosting day one for some reason. Oh, my. It's going to be a band. Well, maybe we'll bring you on the desk. Okay. Sure. Why not? Why well, not? That's we'll bring you on. Welcome Lock it on. Easy. Well, I'm just going I mean, to I'm, make decisions now. I'm uh, fourth game, you know. My plan yep. is just Team Heretics, you know. We'll uh, be there. Yeah. So, see you this weekend, Trimby. Good luck yeah, with perfect. everything. Thank Good luck you. to all perfect. the teams <laughs> in this final week. This has been Euphoria, episode 16. Uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. For episode 17. Wait, the week after. There's a break week oh, after. Yeah, we'll break see week. you, we'll week see you week before after. week four. We'll see you before the best of three. There's a break week. Later.